I just want to say it's a real privilege to speak to you today. And I'm not saying that just to be polite. I really mean it. I feel this is a great privilege. And the second thing I want to, to address is the question you're all asking yourselves, whether you realize it or not, which is, why should you bother paying attention to what I have to say to you? And really, there are two reasons that it's worth paying attention to anything that anybody has to say to you. One is that, that they are offering something that you think is important or valuable. And the other is that you think that they have the ability to, to pass it on to you, that they have the credibility, the believability, the experience, the knowledge, whatever, to be able to, 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 uh, to, to put it over, to carry it over to you. And so let me open by saying I think I meet those two criteria. I hope I do. Uh, first of all, uh, I've achieved a measure of success in my life. I've been blessed. I've been fortunate. And I'm happy. I'm a happy person as a result. And I think there's probably not a person here who doesn't want to feel that he's achieved some success and that he's happy that you ha really happy, not, not just momentarily happy, but like you wake up and you look forward to the day, and you go to sleep and you look back on the day and you're happy with what happened. That's, and second of all, be, because I'm, I'm 70 and I've achieved a measure of happiness and success, success in my life, I hope that that's the only credential, the only qualification I need to be at least somewhat believable and to make it somewhat worth your, your while to hear, to, what, to hear what I have to say. So. Uh, there, there are, in order to be successful, in order to achieve your goals, the goals that you think are worthwhile, I, I found there are like th sort of three top things that you can keep in mind and that will really help you. If you really stick to it, stick to the program, it, it'll help you. I mean, I, thank God I have a, a good family. They're happy. They're successful. I'm hap I have a good career. I'm successful in that. And I'm just, I, I'm pleased with my life. And I think if you, if you, these are three doable things, and if you do them, you can, you can make it. You really can. Um, the, uh, the, the, I guess the best way, let me, excuse me one moment here. I just want to. The first thing is, one of the biggest barriers to being successful is feeling it's just too much. I can't do it. I'm not up to the job. I don't have the ability. I, I, I don't have the patience, whatever it is. So the first thing you can do to counter that, make, you know, set a goal, but, but set your, your sub-goals for achieving that goal to be modest, small, bite-sized. We, we know this is true. Chazal tells us this with regard to the Kabbalahs that we take upon ourselves in, for Yom Kippur, that they should be really almost sound trivial. Because the most important thing is not is, is that they should be a, that you should be able to accomplish them. So if if the issue is that you uh, you know you sleep too late, then just a minute a week try to get up earlier. A minute a week, that's all. You know, don't make it really really small. And uh, if the issue is learning and paying attention and learning, start with five minutes. Just say I'm going to pay attention for the first five minutes. I don't care what happens with the rest. And then try to increase it by a, week, a, a minute a week. I'm not saying that this is what... I'm just saying to give you an idea of the scale and the scope of what you're doing. Make it, make, you know, break down these huge tasks into tiny pieces and then give yourself plenty of a time to achieve each piece. And, and again, I'm telling you, that I'm not selling this from, from the books I've read, although it's in the books. I, I, I went through medical school this way. I, I raised a family this way. When, when I found a shortcoming or a deficiency, this is how I tackled it, and it worked. It works. The, the, next, the next thing is, don't give up. You're going to fail. We all fail. I've failed more times than I can remember. You're going to fail again and again and again. And uh, my Rosh Yeshiva, when I never really went to Yeshiva, was Rav Noach Weinberg, the founder of Eshet Torah, where I had the privilege of going just after it opened. What, one of the things that he would say was the difference between a tzaddik and a fool is that a, a tzaddik, and this is, he's quoting Chazal, falls down seven times and he gets up the seventh time and goes back for more. And the fool falls down once and he's finished. And, you know, you can look even Lahavdil in the secular world. Thomas Edison, who invented the light bulb, a pretty important breakthrough in, our, in, in everyone's lives for generations to come, 
before he found the right filament, you know, the thing that, causes, that, that heats up and causes the light, he had to go through over 100 different elements, and each one blew, 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 blew. But 101 or 110 finally worked. If he had quit after one or 10 or 50, we, you know, who knows when we would have had the light bulb. And this is true of everyone who's accomplished anything. You know, they, they talk about their successes, but they don't talk about the failures, but everyone has failures, and that's just part of life, and just accept it. Don't be discouraged. Just get up and try again, and you will succeed. And the final thing, which kind of will tie it all together, which will, will guarantee your success, as it were, Davin. And I don't mean just when, during Shachris and Mincha and Mar, Rav, Rav, the great of Rav Abigdur Miller used to say, you should be davening all day long. Every time you come into a challenging situation, challenging for you, whatever it is, the sleep, the learning, the whatever it is, just close your eyes, you know, don't close your eyes, say, just mutter to yourself, think to yourself, God, please help me accomplish this. That's all you have to say. That's all that God wants. And I have a friend who's my age and who's a, med a physician as well, and he said that you, you can do this with your Gashmias desires and you can do it with your, your Ruchnias desires. Because what God wants to see is that you're aware that he's, that he's in charge and that he loves you more than anything you can imagine and, and, that he, and anyone that he can imagine and he, to, to, any, to a degree that you can't even begin to conceive and that, and that you're totally dependent on him. That you're not, you know, it's not you and it's not me and it's not anyone else. It's, he's ultimately the one who's going to pull it through. And when you utter that simple tefillah, God, you know, help me get up an hour, a minute earlier, you're, you're, you're showing that you believe all of that and that, and that you, will, you will get the help you need with Ruchnius and with Gashmius. So just whenever you're in a tough spot or you need, you need a little extra help, just spend a second or two and just ask for God to help you. And those, if you do those three things and you do them consistently, uh, and they're easy, they really are. I mean, if you, if you get in the habit, you will, you will succeed. Now, but there's another part to this whole thing, which is... Uh, you know, that you will succeed at anything, whether you want to be a, a, an athlete or a, a musician or a celebrity, but those things won't bring happiness. You want to not just be successful, you want to be happy. That's really what it's all about. Rav Noach Weinberg used to say that ultimately no one wants anything more than to, to meet a wise person. That is someone who can tell them how to live in a way that will bring them that kind of happiness. And, and, um, and so, you, you, so what, what is it that's going to make us happy? Obviously, it's, it's doing the Ratzon Hashem. And why is that? It's because the whole reason that Hashem created us and the world and the world around us was to make us happy. Because Hashem is all good, and the essence of goodness is wanting to pass the good on to someone else. And since he's all good, he wanted nothing more than to have a, a being, and that's us, that he could make happy for the, in this world and forever after. And he's given us an instruction manual. And in, the, and in, in exactly the same way as if you followed your Maserati's uh, owner's manual to the T, and you maintain it and take care of it the way you're supposed to, it'll perform at its best. Hashem gave us an instruction manual in the form of the Torah that if we follow to a T, will make us happy, which is what he wants us to be. And with happiness, that's one of the six constant mitzvahs, comes everything else. So you, you really, you, you, you really it's, it's, at, it's at our fingertips. So you, so, so you might ask yourselves, if, if Hashem wants us to be happy so much, why didn't he just make us happy? Why do we have to go through this whole lifetime of challenge to be happy? And he, he did create creatures like that. He created the malachim. They're happy. and they, didn't have to, they, don't, they don't have to make choices. They don't have to struggle. But we know that we can be a thousand times happier than malachim and be, by, by having to work to get what we, we achieve. And I think you know that from your own experience. If you can go up to the plate and you, and you can hit them out of the park from the first time you, you, you play baseball, you feel good. But if, you, if you're all thumbs and you can't, you can't even, you can't catch a ball, you can't hit it for your, if, if, if your life were at stake, and then you work and work and work and you finally achieve it, and you look back, the feeling you have, the, 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 the joy, the pleasure you have is immeasurably greater than the guy who just got out the plate and hit. And Hashem knows that about us, and he made us that way. So we have to, we have to but the way to meet those challenges, I think, is to use those three techniques that I've, that I've told you about, and you'll, you'll hit it out of the park. You know, you'll, you'll really, really be happy. And <clears throat> so, and it's where, where do you find the Torah? You find it here. The, the one thing in my life that, that makes me saddest is that I didn't get to go to yeshiva. The one thing that you have every day, all day, is the one thing that I didn't have. And I realized I, I, that was for a reason, too, and that was for the best. And perhaps it was only so that I could speak to you today 
and maybe have some little effect on just one of you, and maybe that, for that it was Kadai that I shouldn't go to yeshiva and I should have that lack. And I should have the, you know, I'll have the pleasure of knowing maybe that somebody heard one or two words that I said and it made some positive difference in, in, the, in the way you approach your day and your work and your life. Uh, so, so it's, it's uh, you know, it's, you, you have in, the, in, the, in your, your wonderful rebbeim, you have the, you know, you have the Torah, which is the key to being really happy. And, you, and the, if you use techniques, just be bite-sized, small steps, don't give up, daven all the time. You, you can get it. You can, you can be that person. You can be that really successful, happy person. Absolutely, 100%. So <clears throat> my, my, my wish, my hope, my, my, my bracha to you is that you should be matzliach in achieving happiness uh, you know, through the Torah, and you should bring nachas to everyone around you, but most importantly, you should bring it to yourselves.